Direct Connection is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. Live from Maryland Public Television, this is Direct Connection with Jeff Salkin. Hi, everybody, and thanks for tuning in for Direct Connection. Tonight, we connect you with the region's only proton treatment center. It is a brand new $200 million attack on cancer. Joining us in the studio now for this week's Your Health Topic is Dr. William Regine, the Isidore and Fanny Foxman Schneider Endowed Chair and Professor of Radiation Oncology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and also Executive Director of the Maryland Proton Treatment Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us and congratulations right. on the opening. Yeah, it's been a 10-year project and it's great to be here. About 60% of cancer patients, you were telling me, get some form of radiation. Right. For, for how many will, will this be appropriate? So this will probably benefit about 20 to 30% of patients who need radiation treatment for their cancer. So the exciting thing, before this center opened up, there really was not any access to this tool in our toolbox. The closest place north is in Pennsylvania. Really the closest place south of credibility is in Florida and Jacksonville. Closest place west uh, would be in St. Louis. So, do you, do you think of proton therapy as a subset of, of radiation? Yes, absolutely. Or do you think of it as a different thing? It's a different type of radiation. It is a subset. There's very, uh, there are only a limited number of centers in the country, 20 or less, in the center. Um, it's and it's very expensive typically to build a proton center. So it's one of the reasons it's not easy to have that in most locations in the country. So we feel for it has been a 10-year project, and we're very excited that we can now offer this to the cancer patients in the Baltimore, Washington region. Is there a type of cancer, a type of tumor that is most amenable to, to this kind of treatment? Uh, most commonly is solid uh, tumors. Uh, so anything you can imagine, brain tumors, head and neck cancers, um, tumors of the uh, gastrointestinal tract, uh, lung cancers, prostate cancers, particularly pediatric patients, because pediatric patients, their tissues are growing, and the advantage of proton over the standard radiation in that 20 to 30 percent of patients is it really minimize any dose exposure to surrounding normal tissue. Kids are more sensitive because their tissues are growing. Somebody with uh, breast cancer, prostate cancer, how would it be different? How would it be better? So let's take the example of breast cancer. So one of the areas where people uh, will see the increased indications of use of proton therapy are particularly in patients with left-sided breast cancer. Because underneath the left side, of the patient's breast and chest is the heart. And in the last two years, there have been some uh, increasing literature that has shown that even low doses of exposure to uh, a woman's heart will increase the risk of coronary artery events. And proton therapy, if you compare, compared to the standard photon therapy, in many of those patients will dramatically reduce the dose exposure to the coronary artery. So the patients can be cured, and just as importantly being cured, not be at risk for any of the long-term side effects of radiation. Forgive me a layman's question yeah. here, but it's, it's another form, it's a beam of energy, right. the or deem, in this case, matter, that, that is going to destroy tissue when it hits the tumor, um, but it's also going to have to go through some you know, skin, right. some other structures. Right. What, what makes it, other than the ability to aim it better, is there anything else that makes it yeah, better? Yeah, it's a physics difference in that Protons are charged particles, where standard radiation are not charged. And what that and what that means when it going through your tissue is you can pick an energy of the proton beam so that as it's traversing tissue at a very low dose, when it goes to stop, and that stops in the tumor, all of its energy is deposited into tumor. With no dose after that. With photon radiation, we have to come in from many angles, and we can concentrate the radiation to the tumor location, but there's still this low dose exposure to any surrounding normal tissue or organ. We have this very cool animation that, that shows yeah. how the whole center works, and, and it starts with uh, getting some photons. Where, well, where protons, do you get the, 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 the protons? protons? So that right. blue uh, device is the cyclotron. That's a 90 ton device that shoots the proton down a beam line. In generating the protons within the cyclotron, they travel two-thirds the speed of light 
and over 300,000 miles before they go down that silver pipe. And along that silver pipe, you see these brown magnets. They're called bending magnets. And since protons are charged particles, the protons are steered down the beam line uh, by the bending magnets. They then steer it into the back of five treatment rooms. What you're looking at right now is a gantry. That's a uh, device that turns the protons and aims it at the center point of the tumor within the patient. So you to see the patient there, that gantry's 283 tons. The accuracy of the beam as it delivers the treatment is plus or minus half a millimeter. The unique thing about our center is when that gantry spins, the first thing it does, it takes a CAT scan. And that's an advancement in proton therapy. Proton therapy, many people might not realize, was first FDA approved in this country in 1988. But only in the last three or four years do we have the cap capability of actually taking a picture of the patient with a CAT scan before the beam comes on, which corrects for any movement of the patient as well as corrects for any motion of the tumor. Because when a patient's laying on the machine, they're breathing and their tumor's moving. So for instance, a patient with a lung cancer now, you can correct for any motion. And then the beam comes on and the second advancement beyond the CAT scan is the beam is now a very fine, what we call pencil beam. So it really shapes to the contour of the tumor compared to previous proton beams we're able to do. Let me, and this uh, is only the second center in the country where every room has those two capabilities of scanning a patient and doing that pencil beam proton therapy. Amazing stuff. Let me it remind is. our viewers, if you have a question about Radiology, uh, radiation therapy, radiology in general, or the uh, proton uh, therapy in particular, you can give us a call. We'll have the number on the screen. Or tweet your questions. The Twitter address is at MPT News. Patient's perspective, if they're laying there inside that gigantic gantry, does it feel any different uh, than... Patients than will tell you it's so much easier than the CAT scan uh, MRI, where they're in a tunnel. Here, it's pretty much wide open. They'll see the, the gantry head that delivers the beam is probably five, six feet away from the patient. The patient doesn't feel anything. They don't hear the beam. They don't see the beam. They lay on the table probably for uh, less than 10 or 15 minutes. The beam delivery is about two minutes. So a lot of set, getting on the table is being set up, checking that they haven't moved. Uh, typically, a patient gets treated for their tumor or their cancer uh, five days a week for about five weeks. So about 25 treatments is a common treatment course for a patient. And the nice thing is most patients will have minimal or no side effects so they can go, out, uh, go about in their normal lives and go to work and do what they normally have to do. Let's take a call from Prince George's County. This is Pat. Pat, uh, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I would like to ask uh, the doctor about a treatment that my cousin had that was um, a similar kind of treatment than, than he's been talking about. But um, they said that, that her tumor would not come back, and I'm imagining that it was a, meningi a meningioma from what, yeah. what I understand. Um, she has now had um, a recurrence of the tumor, and are, they're wanting her to have another of these treatments. And she's wondering just uh, whether it's worth the trouble to go through it if it's going to come back so soon. Pat, thank you very much for the yeah, phone it's call. A, it's a great question. A couple of things. Meningioma is a relatively common brain tumor that proton therapies can be particularly beneficial. It typically occurs around lining of the brain near some eloquent parts of the brain. So proton therapy works very effective. Unfortunately, we don't cure everybody, so tumors come, can come back. If you're going to deliver a second course of radiation, because many patients now might experience a recurrence even with previous radiation, proton therapy would be the best treatment option. But the first thing that has to happen, Pat, is you gotta make sure that other tools in the tool, cancer-fighting toolbox might not be better. So the first thing we would do is we would evaluate the patient as part of a team and we would ask our surgeons, is there a role for them in removing the tumor before we gave additional radiation? That way we're treating the smallest possible tumor that's remaining, uh, especially in somebody who's been previously radiated. Uh, Carroll County, this is Eileen. Eileen, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Eileen, are you there? Hello. Hello, you're on. Okay, hi. I hi. was just wondering if insurance companies have agreed to cover this new treatment. 
Great, great, great question. question. Thank you very much. So I just want to remind, it's, not, it's really not a new treatment. It's just something we've not had accessibility to. FDA approved since 1988. Worldwide, over 140,000 patients have been treated with proton therapy, 15,000 in the last year. One of the struggles that Pat just brought up is because of the expense of building the centers, typically in most other centers around the country, the cost can be two to three times more standard radiation. We and one other center, Mayo Clinic in particular, are the first in the country because of the volume of patients we'll be able to throughput through our center because of some unique features. The cost of proton radiation therapy at the Maryland Proton Treatment Center will be equal to the cost of getting radiation across the street at the medical center, standard radiation. Wow. So we've, so far, Medicare typically covers this, Pat, and uh, one of the larger carriers in, the, in this uh, region has just agreed to cover it as well. So I would say about 70 to 75 percent of patients we currently see in the Proton Center, insurance will cover it. About 25 percent we have to go through a back and forth, make the case, show them the differences between a proton plant and a photon plant. But typically with some work and effort and the patient helping, where there's an indication of benefit, we can get that covered. So you have uh, five rooms right. using that, basically sharing the, the beam in, in some way. Yep. Uh, the beam can be in one room at a time, so when a patient's getting treated, they get their treatment for a couple of minutes, and, and then, then it goes to the up. next room. Right, so, I mean, there's a certain capacity. Right. When, when do you think you hit that? So, right now, the first room opened up about a month ago. We're treating, we, can, we have the capability to treat about 15, 20 patients a day. With each room, we'll treat about that many more. It takes almost three months to bring each of the subsequent four rooms on, so we'll be at a fully operational around January, February of 2017. At that point, we will go to 16-hour days, five days a week, and 10-hour day, 10 days on Saturday. We'll be able to treat about 150 to 200 patients a day, and about 1,500 to 2,000 patients a year. Great. Uh, Jim on the line in Carroll County. Jim, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Uh, I believe you you answered the first question, which was going to be, how are the proton beams generated? And your diagram kind of explained that. Two, is this a, this is not a multi-beam machine like a, a, a tri-beam x-ray, the older type, is it? No, this is a single, single beam, beam. beam line, which, and the cyclotron varies the energy that it puts down the beam line according to the depth of the patient it's treating the tumor within the patient within each particular room. So the energy, Jim sounds like a, a engineer. There is some expertise The energy there, yeah. ranges anywhere from 70 million electron volts to 230 million electron volts. The higher energy is used for tumors that are deeper in the body, lower energy for tumors that are more superficial. I read somewhere that there's about to be a wave of these coming online, that you're sort of in the vanguard of there are going to be dozens opening in the next yeah, few I don't, years. Yeah, um, I don't know if it be dozens of them, but there, there's talk now of instead of these large facilities like ours and most of the current facilities, the ability to, deliver, to build one or two room centers. And you and I talked about Georgetown is going to have a center in about a year. It'll be a single room. We hope to be working actually with Georgetown within our facility. And that's been the vision of, of the center. That's why we built a large center. We're making it accessible to regional uh, health care providers, so we're partnering with, uh, with places like Georgetown and other regional centers within there. Inclu I hope to and expect to uh, partner with John Hopkins. Uh, we partner with them right now in a photon center in Howard County, and I'm hoping they're actually building a center, a three-room center in Washington, and I think in the next two to three years. If there's a patient out there or a physician out there with, with a possible candidate for this, how do they how do they reach out? How do you get the whatever referral might be needed? Yeah, we're on the internet in the terms of a website. Uh, with, it's mdproton.com, I think. You can Google that. Wouldn't be hard and, to Google. And yeah. then there is a phone number, uh, and our general rule is we will see patients within twenty-four to forty-eight hours of a call. Tell me about the research side of this. Right. What what are you most interested in? Uh, well, we, I think our jobs as an academic uh, institution, a university that's an NCI-sponsored cancer center, is work to define what are the, the true and best indications for use of this therapy. It's expensive. 
Uh, so we want to be good stewards and we really define how to best use it through the concept of clinical trials where we set up trial designs that will help us learn which are the best situations, case presentations of cancer in which proton therapy gives us the biggest benefit. The expectation is uh, essentially every person who comes into the center will be on some form of a clinical trial. Some of these will be NCI-sponsored clinical trials. Some will be clinical trials that will be born out of other proton centers that we work with, including MD Anderson and University of Pennsylvania. And some will be our own clinical trials. And one point, one of the things that's real important when people are looking at any sort of radiation therapy center, beyond the, the strength of the technology, really what's m probably even more important is the strength of the people operating it. And we are fortunate, we actually have two individuals who actually trained or worked in the center that developed this most advanced form of proton therapy in Switzerland. Two of them are our, our faculty. And it's why we've already started seeing patients from around the world. We actually have patients who've come to us from Australia, Dubai, Spain, uh, and the, because of our faculty, not just because of our technology. Tell me if I'm hearing you right, that, that, that um, a couple of the common cancers that this will be most useful for, you mentioned uh, breast cancer, particularly on the left side, right. where, where the heart is an issue, and the prostate, where you have all of these structures very close to the prostate that you're trying not to harm it. Tell me about that, but also the flip side, is there anything where this isn't going to provide any benefit over regular radiation? Well, I would say in, in prostate cancer, patients, what we call, they divide patients into low, intermediate, high risk. I say well, for most low risk prostate cancer patients and most in general, there's probably not a great benefit from proton therapy. Uh, the other cancers where protons are going to have a greater benefit are like esophageal cancer, head and neck cancers, which is Become a, becoming almost epidemic in this country because of HPV right. uh, virus, uh, brain tumors for sure, lung cancers, breast cancers, um, certain types of liver tumors. The most common cancer worldwide is liver cancer. We see a lot of hepatocellular cancer at our institution because we have a big transplant uh, program. Uh, so those are, those are probably some of the bigger cancers. Let's grab some more phone calls. Gene uh, in Carroll County. Gene, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Yes, my question is, has uh, this therapy, this treatment been tried with uh, ovarian cancer? And if so, has it had any effect at all? Thank you. Yeah, great question, Jean. Not typically. Uh, ovarian cancer, typically the, the mainstay of starting therapy is surgery and chemotherapy. Uh, radiation for to a focal site is not a common use in ovarian cancer. It's interesting that... Um, one of the risks of getting radiation in the long run, if the younger patient is, they may be exposed to developing a radiation-induced cancer. The first patient treated in our center happened to be my patient who had received radiation treatment to the pelvis for an ovarian cancer almost 30 years ago, and she developed a rectal cancer that was probably related to her radiation from 30 years ago. And because of her previous radiation, proton therapy was a perfect indication to use in her treatment. What other questions do you get from patients? I mean, patients want to know if they're going to become radioactive from this. Yeah, or what, you know, what do you they, how sick will they be? How long is the treatment? How will it affect it? Uh, they won't feel the treatment. Uh, the process compared to things like MRIs, and generally in, in, in terms of a lot of exposure to chemotherapy, is usually dramatically easy. These patients, all patients generally walk in and out for their treatment. They're generally not feeling any significant side effects. They can go to work. They can do whatever they need to to go on with their daily uh, lives. Will every community hospital have one of these in a decade or two? How, where do you see it going? Uh, so it's interesting you ask that question. There are cer certain countries in the world where health care is borne by the government, where they're talking about in countries that have only maybe 5 million people building four proton centers for 5 million people. So in this area, the Baltimore, Washington area, within a 200-mile radius is... 50 million people, okay? So in a, uh, imagine a small country building four proton centers with the ideal by reducing the side effects that can happen with radiation, they save the long-term cost to society. Uh, and it's one of the challenges we have with the type of the way coverage is made in this country where insurances uh, typically cover a patient for three to four years before people switch. So the, the benefit of 
watching that cost that can happen over the years is not as readily appreciated by many of the insurance providers. I'll say that company. more directly. So the insurance company isn't really too concerned about what's going to happen five years from now. You said that, right? I, I, didn't say I that. think that's what I was. Sort I think of there's a little bit of that. Which hearing, is, yeah, right? that's, that's you. You said it clearly. I think one of the things we're trying to do, and, and, and more, the more you'll see, is we're trying to partner with insurances by way of minimizing the cost difference. I think that's been the big challenge. Uh, and with our center, Mayo Clinic, Penn, University of Pennsylvania is talking increasingly of making the cost neutral, standard radiation, becomes much easier because in those patients where we can show a difference, and we literally can show difference either by publications or by actually looking at how the dose is delivered compared to the normal tissue exposure, then you should probably get proton therapy. And the good news, I want to make people hear this loud and clear. The current radiation therapy that's most commonly available is probably 20-something centers within, you know, 30 to 45 minutes of downtown Baltimore. That is absolutely outstanding therapy in about 70 to 80 percent of the cancer patients who get radiation therapy. But for those 20 to 30 percent where that low dose exposure can be significant to a surrounding normal tissue organ like the lung, the heart, the bladder. Pro, this pro form of proton therapy can be beneficial and reduce the chance of side effects. And that's what we want to make sure people realize is now available in the Baltimore, Washington area and it wasn't until the center opened. Is the, the, the treatment schedule similar? You talked about five days a week yeah. for you got to be there for an hour and then, you know. The, yeah, overall, you're in the center probably less than an hour. But, but, but where I'm going is five times a week, five weeks, 25 sessions. Is that what, what a radiation yeah. schedule would be? Yeah, it, ha it has been. So right okay. now, most patients, current their schedule is similar to the standard radiation. What is expected to happen and has already started happening because of the precision and the low dose distribution of proton therapy, we're going to be able to treat patients even shorter time period. So for instance, we have protocols now where certain lung cancer patients where the typical treatment is six to seven weeks, we're reducing it to three weeks. Certain breast cancer treatments that typically five weeks, we're reducing to a week. So that's going to also increasingly happen with this type of technology. We're going to dr start dramatically shortening the length of the overall radiation treatment in terms of days and weeks. And that's something we'll also have to define through the clinical trials we conduct at the Proton Treatment Center. Let's take a call from Pennsylvania. This is Betty. Betty, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Yes, my question is, is if this therapy is effective with multiple myeloma patients. You know, typically I would say we don't use proton therapy in multiple myeloma patients because the good news is multiple myeloma, when you use radiation therapy, very, very low doses can be very effective at, at getting rid of the multiple myelomas the, the treatment is aimed at. So since the dose is so low, there's really not going to typically be a b big gain with the use of proton therapy. So, low dose for standard radiation is very effective for multiple myeloma. Let's get one more phone call. Anne Arundel County, this is Jean. Jean, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Does this new treatment offer any help for pancreatic cancers? Great question. Jean, thank you very much. Yeah, so it's, that's actually one of the clinical trials we're developing. One of the challenges with pancreatic cancer is it's a, it, it's a sort of a balance between treating the tumor that we can see and while at the same time allowing a patient to get the um, more aggressive forms of chemotherapy for the tumor cells we know with pancreatic cancer are trying to spread. And pro what we hope with proton therapy, since it's a much more focused, we can give both at the same time. So one of the studies we'll be opening is treating pancreatic patients where they're getting their full dose chemotherapy and full dose radiation to the pancreas tumor at the same time. Typically, with standard radiation, because of that low dose exposure, you can't give both together. So I say pancreatic cancer is a potential we're going to define of benefit for use of proton therapy. I just have a few seconds, but sum up for me the importance of, of what you've just opened. Uh, it's bringing hope. It's bringing hope by the fact that we now have a tool in the cancer fighting toolbox that was not accessible to patients. And it's a tool that could benefit about 20 to 30 percent of patients who get radiation therapy. So we're really excited about that. Dr. Bill Regine is executive director of the Maryland Proton Treatment Center. 
and a busy man, and we appreciate your taking time to talk with us tonight. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Doctor, thanks very much. Uh, join us Thursday at this time for Your Money and Business and a look at Maryland's business and consumer news. And then we're back Friday with State Circle. For all of us at MPT, I'm Jeff Salkin. Thanks for watching, and have a good night. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System. This program was made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities.